What is up, everyone? So we took a little break. I needed to regroup and think about this, and we're going to be building a new website that are going to lower our fees so we don't have to, you know, stop doing what we're doing over here quite yet. But thank you for all the support so far, and if you haven't subscribed already, click that subscribe button, give this video a thumbs up. This is one of our first series that we did on this channel, and it really got us off to a good start. And I wanted to redo it with what I know now, and hopefully give you guys a lot more knowledgeable info on this topic of Electro House. So, I'm also not doing my video, like the video of me on these. I feel like they kind of just take away from it and there's really no point of seeing me because it's about the music knowledge and stuff like that. So, you know, I'll still do my talk videos, uh, but for these right now, I'm not going to put my video on here. It's just going to be just the screen share. And, you know, if you think otherwise, go ahead and comment down below and say you want to see my face. If not, we're going to keep doing it this way. It keeps the file sizes down, the editing easier, and yeah just a lot better so in this video we're going to be doing drums um i have a yamaha keyboard really old that's where these tracks are up at the top we'll use them later on in the training but for part one it's just going to be just the drums and so i got a kick in snare some claps some pre-kicks and pre-claps that uh, i just eq'd them real quick to save up time and then we'll we'll probably resample this down to one if it sounds good and we like the way it's going. Then we have some symbols I grabbed from various packs. And then we have the 909 kit, which I like to layer up a lot. So let's get started. Uh, you know, house, we're going to go with that 4x4 kick. So we're going to do one bar. Keep it nice and simple. Give it some more velocity. And right now it's super fast. We'll go down to about 130. I do like to have it a little faster than normal house. So, so we have the kicks. Pretty basic kicks. Nothing fancy. If we go into the kick, the, I forgot which sample pack I grabbed this from, but that doesn't matter. You need to get a kick that you like and that sounds good. Um, but as for the EQ, I'm going to drop an EQ on there real quick. I'm also getting in the habit of closing that down just so I have more workable space out here. And I'm going to watch the EQ and just kind of see where things are, maybe shape out a little bit. And we already have an EQ on, but we're going to drag it over onto the kick. Let's do that. Keep it a little more rounded uh, and keep those like honky tonky <laughs> frequencies out. And as well as probably cut out some room for the hi-hat. So that's good for the kick right now. We'll get the snare going now. And as you heard right here. That was good. It's the clap. I feel like... I could get some more. A lot better on the clap now. All right, cool. So the kick's good. Now we're going to get in our snare and clap. And I like to have them just a little bit before the kick so that they don't all line up. And same with the claps. I'll either do them delayed or before again. So that's cool right there. I just want to turn the filter on and do some stuff to the... Uh frequencies on the low end. That's good. We'll go back to the snare now, maybe give it some more velocity. Cool. 
And we'll also EQ it. So if we go to the kick, control C, control V. I'm also putting it down an octave, or not an octave, down a semitone or two. Right there is cool. And then the last thing I do real quick is we're gonna put a limiter on them. I used to use compressors a lot, but a lot of these are, you know, pre-compressed samples. So there's really no reason to control them like that. I just like to catch the peaks on them and just, you know, help me balance out when I'm in the mix down stage doing the levels. You know, there's not, the peaks aren't all over the place. So about right there, it's clipping the kick a little bit and then the snares as well. And then when this comes in, oops, I need to cut that off and put that up here. All right, so now if we drag this over onto the eighth bar, and then drag this over. Now into the symbols. So you could do the the first of the beat and then the half of the beat on the three. And that gives it one shuffle. And then if you do the hat, that's one way to do it. Or you could switch it up. So. So something like that's a good shuffle to the beat. And then we'll go to the 909s and see what kind of sounds we could get from here. So let's go to... So when you have the kicks kind of in there, it adds like a nice little flow to it, but... Um, let's change the rim maybe. And then also add an actual EQ to it and get some of those low ends up. And then if you wanted a shuffle to it, you could do stuff like. Um, but we're going to take those off. And that's a good intro beat. We're going to keep this loop going, but we're not going to structure a song out till the last step. You just want to make sure you could get an actual, you know, 
song flowing with some ideas. So we're gonna duplicate this over, but we're gonna create this as like a drop um, drum loop. So a lot of the shuffle we won't have on it. So we could take like the kickoff maybe. We could probably even take off the rim too. So we'll just add a locator drop idea. And this will be like the intro idea. So that's part one, getting your drums down and getting a nice groove with that. Again, if you haven't subscribed already, click that subscribe button. And if you are enjoying this series so far, or any of the content we have been producing for you guys over here at Tarrant Info and Girls, click that thumbs up. In part two, we're gonna go into chords and we're gonna slowly start building this into a full song. I'll see you guys in part two. Thanks for watching. Peace. And it goes like this.